As a tech enthusiast and content creator, the ability to move between productivity tasks like editing and script writing to casual gaming and media consumption is how my desk has evolved to this over the years. Let me give you a tour of my desk setup and why I made the choices I've made to make what I believe the most versatile setup for gaming and working from home. And hopefully you can get ideas for your own setups that keep both productivity and gaming in mind. To start off, I'm using a sit-stand desk from Fully, but the reason I bought a sit-stand desk is because I had some back issues I wanted to alleviate. It comes with four programmable settings, allowing me to go between sitting with my elbows at a 90 degree angle to the desk, a high midway position where my feet are practically dangling. That way I can move my feet around, allowing for some circulation. There's also standing to make sure I'm not just sitting all day. And lastly, a higher position to count for the balance board I have from fluid stance. The balance board forces me to be active and also highly aware of my posture. I've also added on top an anti-fatigue mat so that I can stand on the balance board for an extended period of time. And if I feel that I need to, I can even use it directly on the floor. With the chair I have also forcing me to move, the Hag Capisco. I honestly first bought it because of how it looks, plus the low footprint and the added benefit of not actually having an elbow rest, mostly because it would bump into the desk. And like I said, it's actually a chair that tries to promote an active office environment, having me sit in many different positions or encourage me to move to a standing position. Now that we're done with the desk, how about what's on the desk? Let's start with the productivity-based ones. Oddly enough, the newest addition, a glass mouse pad from Razer the Atlas, other than its sleek look, prevents me from putting anything like coffee mugs and other items that clutter the desk because I don't actually want to scratch it. And because the mouse pad is made of glass, any dust that happens to go in between the mouse pad and the mouse feels like you're grinding over a grain of sand, forcing me to clean it constantly, keeping that side of the desk clean and clear. And depending on the mouse I use, I have the Delta Hub Carpio, which can help if you have carpal tunnel or general wrist pains. But since I've recently moved to a glass mouse pad, I've gone to the G502X. And the reason I use the G502X as my main instead of something like the MX Master 3S for work is that I can do both gaming and productivity using the same mouse instead of having to swap between one or the other. But before going into the gaming mouse that I use, what is my main keyboard? It's the Mark 65 from BoardSource. This is because of its 65% form factor, leaving mousing space while giving me a split space bar layout for me to easily go into the function layers without even moving my hands away from the typing position. One of the improvements I made when I was in tech support was to get an ultra wide monitor. But since I'm no longer with tech support, I have moved back to the high refresh rate 16 by nine monitor but use the ultra wide as a vertical monitor, which has actually helped with monitoring my streams on the streaming channel. But I'll make a video in the future on what makes an ultra wide monitor a great secondary display over something like a 16 by nine monitor. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss that. Moving on to the computer with the typical Lian Lee O11 Dynamic and RGB Galore, which I have themed with the original Pokemon starters, at least their final evolution and Pikachu, of course. It could use a cleaning, but it's been a workhorse that has been running for almost two years now. It's built to help with some of the product tasks like video editing and not just gaming. Currently, it's running a Ryzen 5950 cooled with a 280mm AIO cooler with a screen. Unfortunately, it's not one that I would recommend. And an upgraded 48 gigs of RAM, which is a 16 plus 32 gigabyte kit running at the same speed of 3200. The GPU that is my unfortunate bare minimum for editing is the EVGA 3080 Ti with 12 gigs of VRAM. Nvidia definitely screwed the pooch on that one and EVGA will be missed. And yes, 8GB works as well, but I would like to try to future-proof, even though you can't really, any workload that I would possibly have. All of that is powered by an 850W power supply by Corsair on an X570 Aorus Master motherboard, with the entire computer lifted up with the monitor riser for more storage space for the numpad and other accessories, with the added bonus of allowing a larger gap for airflow. It's not going to tip far enough to fall and neither is the Mimikyu on top. I have my old phone, the LG V60, acting as the top-down webcam. With the Sony as the main cam connected conveniently via USB, looks absolutely great when I'm in the corner of the screen, which is why I'm okay with it only being 720p and 60fps. And I could make it a 1080p camera, however, I do need to connect the switch on top of the computer to the old Elgato HD60S. 
going back underneath the computer, there is a power strip for connecting random items for testing and Volta cables for charging. Volta cables are actually really useful for the ability to use the same cable for devices with micro USB. Speaking of micro USB, for platformers, I still use the old Xbox One and DualShock 4 controllers, which incidentally both have micro USB. I move between one or the other depending on how I feel at the time. The specialized mouse that I am using for gaming is the RG Harp. Ace, which if some of the videos from CS is true, might actually be able to take advantage of the upcoming 4000Hz polling rate adapter. And despite the Razer Atlas glass pad being a speed pad, it still has some control, and I find it usable even with my high DPI setting of 3900. This applies to all of my mice, including the G502X. But what's the reason for such a high DPI? That's due to my previous space, being a small keyboard tray with a laptop, which happens to be the size of a playing card game map. Not a lot of space as you can see here, and I simply stubbornly refuse to learn low sensitivity. And because I play a lot of high-paced FPS games, I prefer to use the Acer Predator 16x9, 1440p, 144Hz TN panel. Whew. Not the best, and there is color shifting depending on the angle you look at it. Yet, it still works better than my ROG 21x9, 100Hz, 144p ultrawide IPS panel. Again, <laughs> not only is the TN panel brighter, but it has noticeably less motion blur, giving it the advantage for FPS even if it was locked back to the 100Hz like the IPS panel. For audio, while it does feel like cheating sometimes, I use the Oravetti OH500 which feels like having audio-based wall hacks because of the excessive precision of the audio, but of course coming in second is the AudioQuest Nighthawks, both connected to the IDSD iFi signature deck. I can even connect both simultaneously if I wanted to. You might have Notice I missed the speaker on the desk. It's the Assel and Current Acro BE100 with the feet removed and replaced by angled Canto speaker stands because I felt the sound has a noticeable quality increase when pointed directly towards my head. Also sourced by the same IDSD DAC, which allows me to pull off the crazy combo of a speaker, headphones, and IEMs with zero lag between them, allowing me to put them in a low volume to help preserve my hearing while being able to drown out loud noises like a vacuum or leaf cleaner outside the room. It does not, however, stop my mic. The DDD3 mounted on the Blue Compass mic arm to pick up said noise. It is the mic I use for these videos and even voice calls. The downside is that it's battery powered. I do use the rechargeable battery so I never truly run out. While it does get annoying when I forget to change it out, it doesn't justify buying the updated DDD4 which I can simply run via USB. The way I actually mount my old phone as a webcam is using a cheap friction arm clamp combo and an old ball head from Joby. And if you're thinking of getting that exact setup, please just get an Arco Swiss mount compatible ball head at this point. It was unfortunately one of the first ones I've bought and I'm glad to be able to put it into some use. Did I miss anything in the setup you're interested in? Leave it in the comments below or check out the channel to see if I've reviewed any of the tech I mentioned. Make sure to subscribe for more content on tech and their ability for both productivity and gaming. I'm your host Naka, have a nice one. As much as I like setup videos as inspiration for my own setup, making my own video just feels like showing off more than anything.